streaming computer in here. It's all up and running, but Restream is not up and running. And so now you have us from the phones. Brett is live on YouTube. Yes, I am. Hello, YouTube. Hello, YouTube. We'll let some people uh, filter in on YouTube here. We've got severe weather. I'm all thrown off, Michael. I'm all yeah. thrown off. I'll tell you what. Why don't you... Uh, Let's turn this around. Why don't, why don't we get to share this with a friend, tag a friend, um, and we'll talk about the the uh, severe weather forecast uh, that's going on in the North Plains right now that's going to move into the area here tomorrow. Um, we're going to let Brett take it away with an analysis. Brett, yeah, guys. Brett, uh, analyze it. So uh, we've got initial storms firing off right now across northwestern parts of Iowa, far southwestern parts of Minnesota here, guys. Uh, we've got storms all the way up into central parts of Minnesota, and this is the start of what will likely be a very severe line of storms uh, as it pushes further off to the east as we work into this afternoon and this evening. And so I would expect kind of out towards uh, Sioux City here to see some uh, additional development uh, as this sweeps further to the east. It will work into an environment that is very conducive from Fort Dodge to Mason City, uh, out towards Rochester, Minnesota, La Crosse, Wisconsin, uh, up towards Eau Claire and Minneapolis. This region in general, and I can turn on our severe weather threat map here, uh, in a very favorable spot for severe weather as we get into this evening. So uh, here's kind of a, a broader overview of what we're going to be looking at here. Uh, this red area, that is a th moderate threat. So that is a four on a scale of five here, guys, in terms of severe weather. And the other thing that I will note with this, you know, I, I think that very common when you get these moderate risk that you get widespread severe weather. Everybody gets it. I don't think that this is necessarily the case. Uh, I, I think that we're dealing with a little bit of a capping environment, uh, a cap just basically a lid on the atmosphere, preventing uh, more widespread convection. But any storms that do form and that can push further east across this area will have the capability easily of producing very large hail, damaging winds, and probably a couple of stronger tornadoes. It's just a matter of how widespread does this end up being. Uh, we can go over here to the uh, synoptic weather platform guys and this is the latest run of the HRRR. Uh, by the way for those of you that are following that are enthusiasts that look at model data uh, synopticwx.com uh, that is going to be uh, the place to go from now and through the end of time in terms of weather model data uh, because look you can do this you can zoom all the way down in to a storm on the HRRR model or zoom all the way out or tilt or do whatever you want all within the platform, which is incredible. No other platform does that. But uh, this is by about 4 p.m. Eastern, 3 p.m. Central here, guys. We can see these storms continuing to move across southern parts of Minnesota. Uh, this line certainly has the capability of being severe. Now, again, I think the question is, you can see this model, it doesn't have a lot down here. Uh, I, I wouldn't be shocked if it, there's at least some isolated coverage down into northern parts uh, of Iowa. And as that happens, there's the potential for tornadoes and a couple of strong tornadoes. You can see that the model tries to do that by about 6 p.m. Central. You can actually see here, Michael, uh, we zoom in kind of the embedded supercells. Look at kind of the hook mm -hmm. on this here just south of Minneapolis. And so we've got the environment here. I think it's just a matter of how widespread it is as we get into this evening. As we continue to go. Do yes. we want to tell folks too that we're, we're updating you on this area right now because it's moving here tomorrow? Yes. So we're just kind of giving you a preview of what's going on today. I got a lot of people asking about here locally. Uh, and we will get to here locally we're get to very here shortly. Locally soon. Yeah. So uh, continuing to move through the evening, 8 p.m., 9 p.m., 10 p.m. We've got storms across northern Iowa into Wisconsin beginning to push off to the east and beginning to weaken a little bit. Now what starts to happen, I'm going to switch over the model data here and take you through the overnight. This boundary that's up here kind of draped across Wisconsin into eastern Iowa, that will start to shift further down to the south into the east into our area into the Ohio Valley. What initially starts to happen is we get Sorry. Yes. Which way? This slide it this way. Just dragging this. Yeah, do it. Sorry. No, you're good. There you go. Thanks. So what starts to happen is this boundary sags further down to the south. This is by about 8 a.m. tomorrow morning, and we're starting to get some storms to fire off. Now, these initial storms, you know, I, I think the tornado threat's very low. 
Mm -hmm. uh, I think that some of these storms could produce some small hail, maybe some gusty winds, but I would say that tomorrow morning, rumbles of thunder, lightning, some downpours, certainly possible, maybe a severe storm in here, but I wouldn't say it's all that impressive, Michael. Yeah, no, I agree. A lot of times this morning convections, heavy rain, thunder, pea-sized hail, you know, that kind of thing. Uh, and then if the atmosphere can recover and, and, restab and uh, destabilize uh, later into the day or through the afternoon hours, the storms can be severe. But early morning convection and clouds, in my opinion, will hinder or limit the severe threat around here tomorrow to more uh, gusty, normal springtime thunderstorms. Mm -hmm, for sure. Now, we do start to notice, let me zoom in here. We do start to notice as we work towards the afternoon. This is by about 12 p.m., 12 to 1 p.m. Note how we start to get more intense colors show up. As we start to work into the heat of the day and as this line starts to sag a little bit further south into the east, these storms get a little bit more intense. And so we'll need to watch probably areas from Louisville to Cincinnati to Dayton to Columbus for as we get into the early afternoon, stronger storms. Storms that have a little bit more of an ability to produce severe weather. Not saying we're out of the woods for central Indiana. You know, I still think that there could be some strong storms in the morning, but I think the higher threat ultimately comes a little bit further down to the south and to the east. If we move over here, you know, this is by the time we work into about three or four o'clock tomorrow, you're talking about strong to severe storms from Bowling Green to Lexington through Columbus, Ohio. And then eventually I think the highest threat will be as we work into the evening, Eastern Ohio, Western Pennsylvania, Pittsburgh, perhaps. I don't know if there's a baseball game there tomorrow or not. I'm sure the team could tell us, but uh, regardless, you know, Lexington through Southern Ohio into Western Pennsylvania, this will be where you can see some individual cells in here. Could be a couple of tornadoes, damaging winds and large hail. Show us the 12Z RRFS, Brett. Let's just look at that and see the, there may be a little bit more of an intense possible outcome. Uh, based on a different set of models. Now, the important thing to note is, is that a lot of the models are different right now. We have a lot of different solutions. Um, so, uh, with that being the case, uh, just because you see chemtrails doesn't mean we'll have stronger storms tomorrow. Uh, <laughs> Correct. Or it may mean we won't have strong storms. We haven't really exactly determined what it means, uh, but we do know that it is not linked to that. We just know that there are several uh, solutions on the table for tomorrow's possible thunderstorm activity. And so, of course, I have to throw out a joke about the chemtrails. But this would, this would suggest a pretty decent uh, thunderstorm threat tomorrow morning if it can materialize. Yeah, for sure. So this would be the solution where, uh, you know, the storms hold together a little bit better to the north. They're able to sustain themselves. I think the thing that I'm curious about here, Michael, is what does our instability look like? Are we working with any instability? There, there's a little bit. It's not... It's enough to sustain storms, how severe they would be, you know, I think that would yeah. be, the, be the question. Right. I just, I'm, around here locally, morning time severe weather is not a thing. Not normally. Not unless so it's a it's, derecho or something. Yeah, to me, I, I'm not really too concerned or, or, or interested in the early morning severe threat. I'm not saying it can't happen. I'm just saying it's just not normal for it to happen. I, I so. think in terms of central Indiana what to watch. Um, I'm flipping through some different data in here from the Synoptic Weather Platform. The the 18Z, I thought the 18Z run was coming in, maybe it was the 17Z. So this is this was what was interesting to me, is that the 17Z run of the HRRR doesn't really have mm -hmm. AM convection. And so there's some data in here that indicates that we're quieter tomorrow morning. If we're quieter tomorrow morning, what happens is these storms that are out here to the west, as they move east, they would be able to work into a more conducive environment for severe weather. Mm -hmm. And so I think what is happening tomorrow morning is really the key for the rest of the day. That's a great, that's a very good point. And I want to talk about something real quick with you mentioning that. Sure. I want to click on this over here with, with uh, what we have going on with that because the forecast will be fluid tomorrow. A lot of you have asked over the last several months about getting clarity at a cheaper price. Um, we will send Nowcast updates custom to your phone 
per, if you if you sign up with the Clarity Home Package. 99 bucks a year, it's like 27 cents a day. Uh, and tomorrow's gonna be one of those days where you need updates as we get closer because we're gonna have questions about how this is going to pan out. And as Brett was saying, we do have models that are not bringing in morning thunderstorms, which would indicate that potentially instability could build and there could be late day stronger mm -hmm. storms. Sure. You're going to know that by getting our Clarity Home Package. Go to BAMWX.com, sign up, click on it. It's 99 bucks. Download the app. You get access. Sorry. And, uh, but I thought that was a good time to mention that. Sure. We just rolled that back out because a lot of you, hundreds if not thousands of you, have asked about it. And so we thought, all right, we'll bring it back so you guys can, you guys can have it. And um, yep, and hope I see hope is throwing the links in there for you yep. all to click. Yeah, the Nowcast guys, you know, just to talk a little bit about what a Nowcast is. A Nowcast is basically within four or five hours of something happening, our meteorologist sending out specific timing, specific impacts, specific trends to watch that detail that you're not going to be able to get into an hourly forecast from an hourly forecast. Uh, Michael's actually going to pull one up here and I'll show you. And, you know, whether it's timing out a severe line of storms down to the minute, whether it's talking about what to expect in terms of impacts from a winter storm in the winter or flurries, uh, that's what the Nowcasts are going to do. They're going to give you the down to the minute detail that you need during an event or right before an event. And so, yeah, here's a Nowcast. Uh, let's see, where's this one for, Michael? That is for Western Minnesota, Western Iowa, and this is timing out the ongoing storm threat and kind of talking about what the threats are. And then we send these graphics to your device and we time out like what the timing is. It's, it's a hand-drawn map from an actual human meteorologist. There is no other weather app that does it. It, it doesn't exist. We are the only service in the world that does this mm -hmm. uh by the way that is actually a fact so if you want actual timing updates sent to your phone when it matters clarity home package 99 bucks hopes posted it in there go and check it out um so so yeah back to the analysis brett what uh we left off left off on you know minimal morning storm coverage mm -hmm. based on latest model guidance sure which uh even even 18Z. the 18z is is trying to indicate that this is by 8 a.m. tomorrow morning. Um, if there's less storms around, we may set up shop for a little bit more day, uh, a day of more intense thunderstorm mm -hmm. activity being possible. Yeah, regardless, so. it'll be it'll be a busy day of tracking storms tomorrow. Uh, it's not going to be a day where, you know, we're clear most of the day and then storms come in. Uh, this is a, a totally different piece of model guidance here. Uh, and that's one issue that we have right now, guys, is we've got 15 different pieces of model data that we can look at and they're they're all different um, right, right now. now they are like this one this one tomorrow morning has thunderstorms to the north um, clears out and then thunderstorms refire along and south of I-70 tomorrow evening which again is not off the table but there is just there's a lot to dissect right now in terms of uh, you know that threat again there was the this was a different version that had a really big line of storms in the morning, probably a little overdone, but you can see the evening and afternoon threat is much lower there because of that morning wave that came through right there. So the morning wave's probably gonna mean the severe threat tomorrow is probably gonna be in the pooper. Mm -hmm. Would you agree? Yeah, if it verifies. Yeah, if, if it, it verifies. verifies. Uh, with, given the uncertainty, you know, two devices in the subscription, Aaron, by the way. Yes. Given given some of the lower confidence with this, let's let's take a a broader picture here of uh, on, you may have to click off. Yeah, I'm yes. on the mess product. And if I mess it up, John Kemper might you know, <laughs> he might get out of here. How do I get out of here? I uh, just go back to network. There, there we go. There you go. All right. So here's today. Here's the general idea for today. Moderate risk. This is where your highest tornado threat is going to be. Minneapolis. Eau Claire, Mason City, into Northern Iowa, still have severe risk all the way down to Kansas City, all the way down into just northwest of Dallas. So a busy day today. And then as we get into tomorrow, here's tomorrow's risk. Now, again, you know, we're, we're a slight risk for the Ohio Valley. So anywhere in yellow, that's a two out of five. You can see further down to the south, northern parts of Texas, three out of five. And then we're potentially... Storms could be a little bit more severe 
Eastern Ohio, Western Pennsylvania, Western New York. I, I think that you could make the argument, pending how things evolve in the morning, that this orange area could maybe extend into Northern Kentucky, um, from Louisville to Lexington to Cincinnati. So I, I would be keeping an eye on this area in here as well for the afternoon. But I think for here, we're, we're, it's highly conditional. You know, we, we maybe could see a couple of strong storms in the morning. If the morning wave is not quite as intense, there could be a couple of strong storms in the afternoon. But I think really your, your worst threat is out here. Yeah. Yeah. So that's kind of the update, guys. If you want to continue to be update, uh, you know, get updates this evening and uh, uh, tomorrow morning throughout the day, again, bamwx.com. Check out the Clarity Home Package, 99 bucks a year. And we'll keep you posted. I mean, we'll probably come on. We'll look at evening data tonight. If it's, you know, if evening data has any suggestions of, you know, um, a little bit of a stronger storm threat or, or more significant severe weather outlook or whatever, we'll come on and talk about it. Uh, nonetheless, we'll probably come on tomorrow morning and keep you all posted as well. But the link's in the comments for Clarity Home. We'll keep you posted. Thanks for watching. Tag a friend. Do we want to, are there any questions that we can address live or... I've kind of not, I've not really seen many, but. I'll uh, real quick give a shout out to uh, 811 Dig, who's our sponsor for the Severe Weather live streams. Uh, I believe April is 811 uh, National Safe Dig Month. Ooh. So, uh, you know, for those areas that do get severe weather over the next couple of days, just, again, be sure to utilize that uh, free 811 number. If you're out digging, uh, be sure to call any, you know, your utility company. If you find power lines down, whatever the case may be, just want to advocate for uh, safe digging and uh, just safety around utilities in general, especially this month of the year. Yep. Thanks, guys. Thanks for watching. We'll keep you posted. Get signed up for Clarity Home. Talk to you soon. Oh, yeah. I mean, yeah, rain. There's, there's a lot of rain coming <laughs> later in the week. We'll talk more about that tomorrow. There is some heavy rain coming, maybe some possible flooding that will that uh, is, is in the cards. So... We will uh, we'll keep you posted and go check out the chemtrail contrail post. That's pretty interesting uh, for some free entertainment. We'll talk to you soon. See ya.